<laughs> All right, gentlemen, let's start focusing on our first game of the day then as it is a qualification match over in the Korean bracket. That was the pre-show brought to you by Savvy Games Group. A huge thank you to them for being here for Gamers Without Borders. First match, it's Hero going up against Bunny. And again, when you look at these two names, two big fan favorites, Ben, to start things off. Hero, as much as he looks decent against Cure, Cure outclassed him in this matchup. Now he's going to have to get some redemption against the Terrans in the form of Bunny. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. And when I think about these two guys, I do think about that finals that they had, where Hero, I think he beat Maru. In fact, did he beat Maru in the semis? I think it was something like that. And then it was like, uh, he's probably going to have an easy time with Bunny, isn't he? And then Bunny absolutely was not an easy time. I mean, this is when Hero was looking like the best PVT in the world. Yeah. But he's been shaky since then. And depending on what Bunny shows up, he's not going to let him breathe. He's not going to let him feel comfortable in a PVT matchup. He's going to be all over him. Like, that was his style beforehand. He is a smotherer. And when you're you're already feeling a little bit shaky in this matchup. Yeah, he's going to make it very, very uncomfortable for Hero. So I'm just hoping that Hero can kind of get going with some momentum because you need to fight back against a guy like Bunny. You can't let him yeah. have his wicked way with you. That's a really good point that you brought up, though. Again, it is a rematch of a roller coaster grand final that we had, right? So obviously, there's no loss of history between these two loco. And in prior meetings, in prior encounters, they have created fireworks. So this should be good. Yeah, they apparently played in the GSL qualifiers, so literally just a couple weeks ago. Oh. And in that series, uh, it was Bunny who ended up winning. So I, I'm definitely with you, Ben. Like, I'm not as impressed by Hero's PVT as I have been over the last couple of years. He's looked incredibly dominant, but at least in this tournament so far, he's playing a little bit differently. Usually, he's very much so the Protoss player who takes the whole map, who's constantly in your face. And we saw a little bit of that against Cure as well. Like, for example, when he expanded to two gold bases, but he's been playing a lot more passively than he usually does. And I just don't know if that's a great idea against somebody like Bunny. Bunny's incredibly good at taking the mm. entire map. If you give him just an inch, he, he's got to take everything. So. Yeah, I'm actually favoring Bunny here. Even though I think if you would have asked me like two months ago, I would have gone hero 100%. I do wonder how much of that is a player-by-player -player basis, though, right? Like, with the way Hero was approaching Cure, it felt mm -hmm. like he was having to be tricky, do some wild shenanigans, try and kind of pull anything out of his sleeve he possibly could, Ben. But uh, Bunny might be a different kettle of fish for him. So who knows? What do you think? I'm, I'm honestly not sure. Like, sure. I... I you know, there, there could be, you could have a 3-0 either way. Like, that's that's how crazy this could be. It could also be a really yeah. hard fought 3-2. Um, one thing that you can absolutely say is Hero's tenacious, and he's already shown his PVT. Like, against Maru, kind of look, looked a bit, uh, a bit outclassed, didn't he? But then against yeah. Cure, who's very solid and by the book in his TVP, he actually went down 0-2, then came back 2-2, and he did it in his own way. I think when he's playing his own style and he's a bit off the cuff kind of thing, that's where he's shining the most yeah i feel that that kind of stuff also if you're if you're like hey this is how you're meant to play pvt throw it out the freaking window that's where hero shines <laughs> <laughs> all right tails man yeah, no, it's uh, he's very good at it, uh, especially if he brings some of the stuff that he brought yesterday. But anyway, let's see. Thank you very much, guys. It is time to head into our first qualification match of the day here. Who is going to go to Gamers 8? Will it be Hero or will it be Bunny? Let's find out. Welcome everybody to the first qualifying match of the day. We've got a full day of StarCraft and Wardy joined by Pig. How you doing, mate? Fantastic. Oh, we've, we've had the games really turn up. Uh, I feel like day one of our second week of qualifiers has been... It was, it was not the best start, but then yesterday things really picked up and it kept on delivering. Those series and those games are really action-packed. And as we get down here, you know, it's last lives. Uh, pretty much every match is an elimination match, so everything's on the line and, you know, the players are going to give it their all. No, absolutely, and I think it's such a crazy one as well because everyone expects Hero to make ease the play that really should be at an event like Gamers 8. But Bunny has been good against him lately. He beat him in GSL qualifiers, and Hero has just had trouble in PVT in general. So it's actually kind of a scary one for Hero to go into. Yeah, it really is. Uh, Bunny historically got dominated by Hero, but you kind of narrow that down to more recently, 
and you look at like the last, what, six months? Uh, Bunny's won four out of five series. The only thing is that, of course, Bunny lost the one that mattered. He lost the grand finals of Atlanta last year, the big premier tournament where they were there live at a venue packed with screaming fans, all the excitement, everything on the line. But now back here in his comfort zone, of course, competing in this, uh, you know, Gamers Without Borders from, from his home online right now, trying to get that spot into the big tournament. I think Bunny's going to be very comfortable. And I think Hero is, of course, going to have his work cut out for him. All right, well, let's see how this series is going to go. We're going to begin in the bottom right-hand corner of Grezvan for map number one. Our Red Protoss player from Dragon Kaizi Gaming is Hero. And his opponent in the top left side of the map in the blue, representing Mystery Gaming, it's Bunny. You know, I, I rewatched the Hero Cure series just uh, a little while ago, earlier today. I was kind of going, mm -hmm. you know, what, what really went down? Because I really wanted to absorb that because we've been, we have so much expectation for Hero. I think sometimes it's kind of hard to look at his games objectively and we're just kind of like, oh, you know, you should win with every attack you do. I actually love the way he played versus Cure because Cure does play very safe versus him and very standard. And he mixed in some extreme greed. He was going, you know, much quicker Nexus before Cybercore sometimes, uh, taking some big risks. The corner base was a fantastic play that unfortunately didn't quite work out for him. You know, Q was able to, to slip away. But Bunny's a different beast. Bunny is a player who's uh, more likely to be the one taking the two base timing, pulling the boys and trying to take Hero out. He's got to be more on his toes defensively. And I do expect the game to be a little bit more lower economy. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know Bunny's going to be uh, bringing some punches, right? Very early. It's how he plays. He likes to be aggressive, so we'll see what sets up right now. Pro being a little bit of an annoyance trying to block the CC, and Bunny does send out a scout as well, just to make sure Hero isn't being cheeky, because, you know, Hero is also very capable of being, you know, someone who suddenly proxies a gateway or proxies a stargate to start, so getting the confirmation that Nexus is down is going to give Bunny a layer of safety in this early game. Really nice block there, delayed that command center for about five, six seconds, and doesn't really cost you anything since Hero was scouting early to confirm there was no proxy barracks. SCV is going to go for the bunker. Yep. Oh, no, sees the uh -huh. pylon. That pylon, you know, I never actually thought about that. The pylon not only blocks the Reaper path, but also does spot that SCV path where they normally try to sneak in to build a bunker behind your expansion. It's actually a really cute little addition, right? It's... Uh... You know, get a little bit of extra vision, obviously, again, main point being block the Reaper, but yeah, a little bit of extra vision, always good. And, you know, those bunkers, when they sneak up, can be such a problem. It's much easier to just get ahead of it. So good to have that information on board as we do have the Reaper not getting too adventurous either. It's just checking nearby, but is mostly going to stay back. And we see a bunker from Bunny at home. He's just very happy to make sure he gets into a macro game, basically. Hero was had a few weeks there where it was every game, Chrono 3 Adepts across the map, and uh, looks like he's chrono at least two Adepts out here. He's got a second one shading across the map as well. Third Adept is on the way, and no gas tech structure yet for Hero. Hero is getting so focused on his aggression, I don't know if he's just forgotten, or is he going for a quick third here? This is a really weird build from Hero. Yep, there's just, just 300 gas in the bank, well, 250 right now, but that's because he just queued up another Adept. Two more gateways going down. Well, he's still going to have a lot of gas to spend at some point, but it's going to be all about the aggression here to start us off. And Bunny going to have to try and figure this out and get defending. I mean, the bunker's obviously step one, but that bunker can drop quickly if a couple force fields drop any SCVs from, uh, you know, repairing it and getting us around. The first Adepts do get out alive. That one low HP I thought might have fallen, but nope. Keeps that alive, and of course, if you're going to just power up with tons of units, well, every single unit is going to count for that. What, what, the, what the heck is Hero doing, Wardy? This this build does not make sense. This is not a good build. I, I, I question I his no intentions idea. right now. This makes no sense. This is very worrying. He's been floating, uh, you know, 300 gas, 400 minerals for the last two minutes of this game. It's really unli un unlike him, but he does have good Adept Micro, gets a few of these Marines. Maybe the harassment with the Adepts can make this all worthwhile. Maybe, but I mean, he's got some, so much to do. He loses one of the Adepts now as well. Builds up a proxy gateway where the slow warpins are currently going on. I mean, none of this really seems in sync. Now a robo facility follow up off the Twilight Council he built, so he's starting to spend that gas pig, but it's also late. The empty medivac goes across the map, try and see what it can do and if it can bait and just kind of force Hero to maybe think about, you know, the potential of a drop when there's not actually going to be one. Adepts will shade forward again. And again, Bunny just has to lie low on this bunker and pull the SCVs from the natural. But the tech is so late from Hero. If Bunny just waits it out, it's generally going to look good for him. 
Only a four worker lead. Uh, the, the thing is, Hero could have done all of this and I, I really feel he could have had a third base up as well. This delayed proxy gateway into Blink. This is really weird. He needs a lot more damage right now. Four Marines are in the bunker. They're going to unload these Adepts on a one-way trip. They are going to die. At least a few of them will be going down. Does get an SCV and very good micro. Bunny could have cut him off a little bit better there. But Bunny, of course, focusing on his macro behind this. Extra barracks are finishing up. Raven's coming out as well. Hero is a master of aggression and he is in Bunny's face right now. The problem is, without a third base, he is a little desperate. He needs to find that damage. He's going to dive oh. right on top of the siege tank. Takes out the Marines. A disastrous decision. The mass repair goes down on the tank, and all of those adepts go down. Hero here, his next wave basically is make it or break it. He's going to try to blink in the main with a lot of stalkers, and he needs to do massive crippling damage because he has no follow-up. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Stim's obviously not done yet. Factory's not on tech lab anymore, so we only have one siege tank. So that might be Bunny's downfall, the lack of kind of standard defensive units that can really stand strong here. Bunny has spotted this gateway in the panel and he knows where that is. I don't know if he's seen the stalkers warp in and off it. He actually loads up and drops. It seems like he's not really aware of the fact that Hero's about to jump in the main and Bunny's going to be severely underdefended. Yeah, I mean, it's such a weird thing to throw that many adepts in and still have quite a reasonable blink timing into the main. It's crazy. He's actually elevated them in before blink is even ready. Gets the raven. The drop comes back to try to unload. Hero doesn't seem to have noticed that. Now he does. He's going to close in on that drop. No escape for those units. The medevac will go down, but he's used his blink to get into the corner, and that means he cannot use it to maneuver, not for a little bit. The prism is there trying to do something. The stalk is going to blink on top of the siege tank. It's make it or break it right here, right now. The widow mine being retargeted onto those stalkers and very nice hold by a bunny to start but it's not over till it's over even four stalkers is going to be enough to pick off more of these units dodges that last widow mine gets on out bunny is hanging on by his uh his fingernails right now stim shields is going to kick in just a moment too late caught completely off guard by this layered aggression confusing aggression but bunny did not know how to read the play and hero is not going to stop he's going for broke I am super impressed, man. I mean, he is just absolutely going big right now. Just continue to keep on going. But I'm more impressed by, obviously, the defensive bunny because I thought he was going to be broken down. Like, he felt so underprepared, but he holds off. He defends, and, of course, in a reasonable position behind this. He now has Stim, so that makes fighting this easier. Let's see if he's going to have enough. With Stim on four, the couple of stalkers already being pushed back here. Marauder Mine gets taken down. There's only a couple of Marauders, but Bunny with the SCVs in front can tank a little bit. He'll be losing more economy. This gives Hero the chance to get back ahead. And we see the SCVs now retreating away. Bunny just needs a couple moments, a few more buy and he should be forever fine here. We've got Colossus before the third Nexus even starts. Hero just does not want to, to be greedy at all. He just wants to keep fighting, taking favorable trades, and exert his will upon Bunny, and he's doing it right now. He really is. He's getting so much damage. The Zealots in the main base as well. No charge for those, but they've got great damage. They're very expendable, cheap units as well. Stork is picking off more Widow Mines on the natural, and that lack of siege tanks after the first few were picked off. The bio getting separated, you know, divided apart and picked apart little by little. The Zealots redropped that. The Stalkers going back in. Those are veteran Stalkers that are heavily wounded. But so many workers go down. And Hero with a bizarre map one. But if you leave an opening, give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Three Adepts started things off very well. Another couple of warp of Adepts got some extra damage. And from there, it was just a relentless stream of non-stop aggression. I was super impressed initially by the defense, but... Uh... Man, you're right, just non-stop aggression. Talk about making it so that your opponent just doesn't have a chance. Hero, able to really just keep on powering through and it just eventually, does all it takes is one attack that really breaks your opponent down and then the next thing you know, yeah, you just have the game kind of in your hands. These adepts were kind of the worst thing that Hero did. You know, the entire build up until this point was kind of weird, but then the stalkers start getting damaged and it really was just the lack of info that existed on the side of uh, Bunny. He had no idea this was happening. Yeah, this is the sort of game that's frustrating as the Terran because you're like, oh, really? Like, <laughs> I thought I was defending really good. <laughs> I defended a couple waves, like at least evenly, some of them positively. 
But uh, the fact that Hero was still able to get those stalkers in at the time he did was was really awesome. And uh, yeah, as, as much as I thought the second and third gateway were late, I guess it doesn't matter if your warp gate's going to be a little delayed anyway. But uh, it's just so odd to see a Protoss build with both no tech and the gateways going down at what I thought was a bit of a late timing. Uh, definitely put my mind through a bit of a loop, but proxying into a delayed gateway uh, and all that sort of stuff, I feel like you just kind of look at this and you say, hey, this is going to hit you at slightly different timings. And I guarantee you, Bunny thought it was either over or almost over. And when he saw nine, 10 blink stalkers in his main at six minutes after everything that had already happened, that probably felt like it was just, it was ridiculous. In his mind, there had to be a third base. There had to be some sort of splash damage tech on the way. But no, it's Hero. He was just leading into the aggro, man. I mean, that's just hero all over, right? Just quirky, different, kind of doing builds we don't expect or don't necessarily make the most sense or whatever else, right? And then he still makes it work. He still finds those openings. And yeah, we'll see what Bunny adjusts in game number two because if hero keeps bringing that level of aggression, you're going to have to A, be a bit more prepared and B, of course, just have maybe even a couple better answers as well. I mean, if you're a bit more prepared, that's the majority of the way. So we'll see what he can do heading into a second map. Obviously, we start up on Grezvan. And map two here is going to be Dragon Skills. This one quite nice for the Terran with the size, but we are going to start in the top left corner with the Red Protoss, who's now up one in this best of five, Hero. And his opponent in the bottom right side of the map representing Mystery Gaming, it's Bunny. Yeah, this map is just a little bit smaller, just good to push across, some good layers and ledges you can put tanks on and utilize in your favor in general. So it's not surprising to see it be probably the first pick of the series out of Bunny. Obviously, Hero still find another Vito somewhere else, but yeah, Bunny picking this one early if it's available makes complete sense to me. Dragon Scales is a map where recently Hero has looked incredible on this map, but he's leaned into his aggression a little bit too much and uh, kind of got excited and chased the Terran into their natural, into, into like siege tanks and bad positions. So I feel like Hero has looked in his element until a one overly aggressive attack has kind of lost him, uh, you know, the game versus Cure, the, the game versus Maru as well, where he tried to blink across the ledge into the natural onto, onto the two tanks. So I feel like Hero has been 95% of the way there. That last game showed some good killer instinct. Uh, as long as he doesn't repeat that mistake from his last couple of PVT series, he's going to be looking good. And early Zealot here is, of course, he cancels that if he wants to get the Nexus faster. But no, he is going to let the Zealot finish. So it does look like he's going to be going for that Zealot pressure. Uh, skipping on the Probe Scout, of course, does mean he's got a big economic boost. Yeah, that one probe so early in the game can make a difference to how much you can afford. And it just allows for, I mean, if you're going to go all out aggression, it seems like you don't really care, right, what's coming your way. You're already building a Zealot in case it's a proxy, so that's nice. This time, by the way, SUV sneaks in, gets the bunker start. The Zealot doesn't realize it, so that bunker will go up. And that's actually a fun little uh, point for Bunny. If you can get that up, a Reaper inside just going to take a lot of heroes' attention from going across the map to now being back at home. And of course, you know, Adept, Zealot, they don't really deal with the bunker well. Usually it's all about the Stalkers. Oh, you haven't made a Stalker yet because he wants to get across the map ASAP with the Adepts and the Zealots. So this kind of completely disrupt what Hero wants to do here. Ah, ah, he still hasn't realized yet. The Adept uh, is going to be coming down eventually, but for now, the Reaper just hanging out on the natural hero still has not seen it. Finally, he spots that bunker, but he's already got a second Adept popping. He's only now going to be starting it. The bunker wasn't quick enough, though. Okay, that Zealot being very early. Great micro for Bunny. Ring around the command center, pocket full of drills. That's the song they sing as SCV children. <laughs> uh, they learn all about the tale of the angry Zealot, and they know not to let him get close. Yeah, that man that marine needed a reminder, man. We lose one SCV on the command center, otherwise he's micro instantly cancels the bunker, believing that's enough because his bunker on the other side will distract and buy time. And as we do start a blink, we're still making an additional adept here as heroes. So gonna try and adept his way through this bunker, which is just gonna be a very slow process. Adepts do not get, deal good damage to that structure. Yeah, especially with their less range, four versus the six of the Stalker. You see, they have to move quite far back to get the healing. A nice focus fire by Buddy for targeting those probes, but Hero counter micro and pulling the weak units back. This is just very frustrating to deal with as Hero. But Blink's on the way at a good timing. His Robo is coming in as well and splitting one adept forward to try to stop that SCV from pairing. Nice play by him, making sure that SCV does not escape. 
Yep, yeah, that's if we're gonna get hunted down. We finally start dealing with this. And just gonna be having the cancel on the back. So gets the salvage off as well, which is always a nice little bonus too. A Reaper finally gonna go down, but uh, yeah, definitely did his, his work and then some. Bunny's building siege tanks behind this. Uh, I'd often say this is definitely aggression building tanks this early, but after what happened in the last game and Hero's, uh, you know, power with four gate blink and the fact that he does it 70% of his games, him and Max Pax, uh, they're the best BBT players right now and they four gate blink a ridiculous amount of the time. I, it could just be for safety. As I say that though, a medevac is on the way for Bunny. If Bunny moves out across this map into a four gate blink, he's gonna get slaughtered. So I'm hoping that he can uh, figure out what's going on and that he stays home defensive. As Adepts just slips straight in for a couple of SCVs. This is amazing damage, of course, just to give Hero that little bit of the edge you're meant to have typically as the Protoss player. So nice to get in and do something. Costs you one Adept. I think we're very fine with that because the later this goes, the less you're gonna rely on those Adepts anyway. So okay to be saying goodbye to one to get rid of a few SCVs. And now the Stalker pressure begins as Bunny's actually moving forward. He needs to be careful. If he gets jumped on middle of the map, he can lose a lot. He's going to lose a Cyclone here. These few Marines are kind of stranded. The Medivac does unload. We're going to fight in the middle of the map. I don't like this at all for Bunny. Loses the Medivac, loses the tank. The Marines won't stand very well after this. And of course, you can warp in more in an instant as Hero and then just jump into the main base and probably do mega damage. This is the nature of Hero. You know, the fans tuned in last week for him versus Mara, expecting a barn burner, and he got bopped in three games very quickly. But it looks like he has come in with tight builds, tight aggression, and he is all over Bunny. Yes, he did siege up and, and warp in Stalkers in range of a tank. That was not optimal by any means. <laughs> he's still got a lot of momentum right now, like picking off gases and SCVs. He rotates back towards the production where that's all exposed now. Oh, Reactor going down would be massive, halving the marine production right now. Yep, just just pain after pain, right? And I appreciate that he realized, hey, look, I lost a few units, right? So I don't have enough to just go blink on top of the tank like I might usually like to. Looks like he's had enough of not doing that, though. He's going to jump on it now, gets rid of one. The other's going to be a little messy. Stalkers in the prison to get over there. He loses a lot of stalkers in this process, actually, but he does reset the tank count, and Bunny doesn't have another on the way. That's GG's, and Hero storms through to a 2-0 lead. Bunny hoping to run into a two gate into a third base or perhaps a, you know, Colossus follow up, something a little bit more economic. But moving out into that was uh, exactly what he wanted to avoid. Uh, I'm not sure if he thought maybe there was going to be a Stargate um, because opening Cyclone into Siege Tank, it's, it's weird. Didn't the Reaper see everything that was going down? It spotted the Twilight Council, right, Woody? I think so, yeah. No, it's it was just kind of... Uh... A weird choice, <laughs> a weird sequence of events, right? And I feel like especially Bunny, like you're playing against Hero, he knows this. I just feel like moving to the middle of the map without knowing where your opponent is or what they are doing, I feel like that's a very risky move in the best of times. And he had a couple of games like this, I think, back in that Atlanta finals as well, where he just sort of moved out, just like, oh, Hero won't be attacking me. Why wouldn't Hero be attacking you? That's what Hero does absolutely the best of all, so... Yeah, just kind of a, maybe a couple of weird decisions here and unfortunately cost him game two and suddenly this is a massive mountain to climb for Bunny to stay in this qualification match. Mm, yeah, moving out at five minutes because that, that's when he was moving out and, and I wanted to check that. So I like that we have the instant replay because I'm like, okay, was it earlier than I thought it was? But no, he was moving out at four minutes 50, four minutes 55, which is right when the four gate blink is coming in. So it's, it's kind of like a, a dangerous moment to be moving out on the map. I feel like if he's moving across at the, the three minute 45, four minute mark, you know, one siege tank and bunch of Marines, you're trying to get positioned before those gateways get up and start warping in units. There are some, some very quick windows, but in in this case, this was just him hoping that Hero was doing a much greedier build and Hero was all over it. The three adepts that came in earlier were fantastic as well. I feel like that really disrupted Bunny and he felt even more urgency around getting his push across the map and uh, lost a little bit of situational awareness. Something which, let's be real, we've all watched what the Protoss has done to the Terran in the last two games. It's been brutal, it's been aggressive, and he has not had a chance to go across the map with anything except an early game Reaper. This is the sort of game that does psychological damage and the Terran player is going to need to show that he's made of, of stern stuff to withstand the avalanche. We're on top of a mountain. We're on altitude. Let's see if the avalanche continues. In the bottom left, representing Dragon Kaizi Gaming, it's Hero. Time to dig deep for our blue Terran in the top right from Mystery Gaming, Bunny. Big map. 
really big map. Um, this is an interesting one because it favors aggressive play so much in terms of multi-prong attacks because there's such a big space between the bases. But for doing really committed frontal pushes, it's uh, a big push path with wide open spaces, easy to flank, hard to get across the map. So it seems like I always feel this map favors the player that's going to be a little bit more focused on a mixture of greed and harassment and kind of like moving the army around in between different attack angles and catching their opponent out of position. This map's always very... Uh... It always feels like it's so big, what can you really do? But there is a lot of open space, right? And that can benefit the Terran and kind of get in that big concave surrounding if you can bait the Protoss one way. And obviously, very easy for the Protoss to be out of position as more bases are taken. We've not really seen games go to that sort of point. So it'd be very interesting to see if Bunny can actually get it to that stage because it's just been hero aggression ending these games early. Time after time, obviously much less likely to now happen on altitude. So let's hope we see something a bit longer than that 10-minute marker. I uh, I do feel like we see a lot of Protoss players get ahead on this map, and then to your point about wide open spaces get flanked by a big bio army and everything just crumbles, you know. A couple of disruptor shots hit the air, they get split against, and uh, Terran looks really fantastic. So Hero's had a few of those moments himself, actually, uh, where he's, he's gotten leads and had it slip away from him on this map. but. I feel like the momentum's on his side. And if anyone's feeling it right now, it's Hero. He's, he's a player who gets that tempo going. And uh, much like, you know, Rainer and, and these other aggressive players, you, could, you they feel unstoppable once they get going like this. It's really, really hard to get inside their head or to, to gain any ground because that kind of high-risk play they like doing, well, they've got all the chances in the world. So there's, there's absolutely no caution. Yeah. It's true, right? When they don't have to care because they've got, you know, games to play with, it's like, well, okay, they're just going to do exactly that. They're just going to keep on going aggressive. They can play how they are most comfortable, whereas you have to start taking even more kind of caution. You can't, you know, allow kind of, you know, an attack to slip by or anything like that. So it's it's very tough when they get this lead. And here, just going to start up the blink here for this game number three big map. Blink obviously allows you to traverse it nicely and potentially get aggressive again. We'll see if he chooses to. There is the option to just get, take two gates into a third base, right? So that is an open choice for Hero. We'll see what he wants to do exactly. Gateways and Robos getting the semi wall off up at the front. Reaper is going to poke in, see if it can get a bit of a scout. That Twilight Council is so far back. I don't think the Reaper can even see it from there, can it? And <laughs> <laughs> if you just walk in, big. <laughs> oh, no. Hero misplaced his buildings. That's meant to block the Reaper from even being able to do that. Oh, you know, Hero and Bad Warloff's name a more iconic duo. This has been like a meme in his Protoss vs. Zerg for a long time, is that his pylon's always in a completely different position, and, like, you never know where the opening's going to be or if the wall's solid or not. But uh, he does uh, make a little mistake there. It's not too impactful because the Reaper doesn't know for sure if it's 4-gate blink or not because, you know, the extra gateways could be going down right now. The Hellion's being super annoying, though. Wow, five probes? That's a ton. Yeah, five probes is a lot of workers, and that's what the Reaper has achieved. It's distracted units into the main base, which has then allowed the Hellion to get through to the natural, and boom, get some extra worker kills, and Bunny starting up strong here for this game. Number three, a Widowmine drop to follow up. Blink will be done to help deal with this. The Prism now on the way out from here as well, as he gets ready to at least put a bit of pressure onto Bunny's side, hopefully try and stunt him a little bit in this game. That's been so good for him otherwise. Yep, the Widowmine drop going to be putting some pressure on it. It does get spotted, though, coming across the map. The Stalkers are ready for it. Oh, no! It's just used its boost. It's going to take a lot of damage here. Oh, no! It goes down! A complete shutdown. And I'll tell you, that doesn't need to do damage, but it needs to keep the Protoss forces pinned on their side of the map, at least a few of them. That is a disaster. And now, even though Bonnie was well set up with tank production, he's, this is going to be hitting way faster than he wanted it to. Oh yeah, absolutely. Here come our Stalkers into the main base. Well, sorry, Adepts and a stalk or two. So a little bit of a combo, but into the main base they go, and this is just damage you can deal, and now Bunny has to deal with this while, again, this started off so well, but you just don't have that way to keep the opponent back. Stalkers actually blink deeper into the natural, so we'll really double down to get some workers here, stop mining time, and Hero just super happy to be super aggressive and force Bunny to run around after him. 
Yeah, the Stalkers and the Adepts doing what they can. Going to shade up towards the main. One Stalker does get shot down. The Adepts are going to shade up to join them. Oh, he's running circles around him right now. I mean, it, it's so dangerous because obviously the Stalkers will go down eventually. But so much lost mining time, so much chaos. Can he get any more? The Stalkers try to recall. A bit of a delay on that. I'm not sure if he didn't have the energy or what, but only three Stalkers recall out. And the Adept, single Adept, saved by the Warp Prism. Hero does not have a third base, so you got to be careful with trades like that. Yeah, he will add two gateways and Temple Archives also investing into charge. And then Immortal. Immortal, obviously, a great choice right now just to sturdy up the army in case of the counterattack, which you have to somewhat expect here because, let's face it, Bunny just took a bunch of damage. And a lot of the time, the Terminal will say, okay, I took some damage, but hey, you know, you lost a lot of army and doing that damage, that's my time to go. Six extra gates from Hero kind of says, though, that that's not going to be allowed to happen. But obviously what it does mean is that Hero is still not on a third base. So Bunny going into third is actually going to be on an eco lead. And obviously in the end, Hero is probably going to try and attack once again here with this amount of gateways. Again, Storm as well. Hero just does not want to do anything related to macro, apparently, in this series. <laughs> like, at all. He's, yeah, I mean, he, he spotted the third command center and he started up Storm. So I do feel Hero, Hero has, has to take a third here. Um, because seeing that third, you know that Bunny is just going to turtle. So it's going to be very difficult to take him out. You want to wait for him to move out to take the third. Technically, you could bust him in the natural expand with Storm. And uh, very interesting build because 10 gateways on two base, right? I, I feel like that's the number we're uh, we're looking at which seems like a little bit too much even with zealot archon which is the most efficient army comp you can make because it's all gas on the archons all minerals on the zealots but uh hero is moving across the map he's got the storm ready double drop's gonna try and sneak across the map uh this is a mistake sometimes players make when they're up against hero where they think well i'm on two base and you'd be crazy to attack in here so i can just delay taking my third and i'll sneak a drop across the map but you need every single fighting soldier at home because that is an immense amount of units he's gonna storm everything the zealots are going in here is just gonna go for it this man has absolutely no chill one tank and a couple of marines is not gonna defend this as you say man there's nothing to actually storm right like you know, there's just nothing here at all. The drop on the map is actually going to turn around, start coming home, but this is going to be way too late. Now we storm the SCVs just to soften them up, make our way towards that siege tank that's trying to defend the main. And it looks as though Hero is just going to absolutely bop Bunny in this first series of the day. This was not even a contest at the end of it. I mean, actually incredible how easy he made this look, especially when Bunny's been looking good as of late and in all his other matches. Hero just didn't let him play StarCraft today. Yeah, sometimes it's like that warty, a painful loss for a bunny, but sometimes your opponent shows up and on that day, they just were not going to lose. And I think Hero has shown this is that day for him. He finally qualifies after so much uh, torment, even yesterday, barely being denied with the, uh, you know, the match first for going down to the final one. But at the end of the day, Hero says, I'm the master of aggression. And uh, I think he just put it so darned well. I'm not going to let you play StarCraft today. Yeah, I mean, he really didn't get a chance, right? It was all about A, Hero's aggression, and then even when Bunny sort of got set up, no, no, just a counterattack. Bunny tries to drop, no, wouldn't mind drop gets denied, double drop gets forced to pull back. Yeah, he just really didn't get an opportunity at all, and just got to say that Hero kind of felt like he threw a lot of stuff out the window and just sort of came in and said, hey, look, I'm just going to play a little bit wild in this series. Tons of gates when, you know, you might not expect them. And we know Hero's, like, very aggressive and quirky like that anyway, but in this yeah. case, I really felt he was just like, man... PBT's not working for me as much recently. Let's just go completely mental in this qualifying series. <laughs> Great way to do it there. Well, let's hear from the lads who've been watching over on the desk. Yeah, Pip, watching, barely. It, but that flew past so quickly. I I can't remember the last time a best of five was this fast. What did we just win? Well, guys, uh, Loco and Ben joining me. Uh, Loco, what was, what was that? <laughs> Yeah, well, it makes me look a little silly, that's for sure. I uh, I was favoring Bunny going into this particular series, and what feels like 20 minutes later at the very least, I don't know exactly how long it's been, but uh, yeah, we have a 3-0 win right there for Hero, just playing it completely differently than he did yesterday against Cure, right? Yesterday, he was playing very passively, just sort of absorbing every blow, trying to expand. Yeah. Today, he's like, you know what? I'm going to make four gateways. I'm going to throw stuff at my opponent's face. I'll just micro really well. 
and eventually, I guess I'll, I'll win. I mean, going into that first game, though, it looked a little shaky, right? Like, he had a lot of money in the yeah. bank. The boys also brought that up during the cast. He, he wasn't really macroing that well, but his unit control was phenomenal. And, well, that's, that's how he made a name for himself, right, over the years. Yeah, well, the highlights and inverted commas brought to you by Aramco here as we take a look at this best of five. Ben, what do you make of it from the Terran perspective? I'm sure you're crying inside, but well, what do you think? Actually, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, 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 I could be if I was like that you know, much about Bunny, but I was really kind of rooting for Hero in this series. Sure, I know sure. he's had such a hard time against Terran. He's been very vocal about it. But like I said before, I really feel that Hero fundamentally is absolutely one of the best producers we've seen over the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I, I talked about how he needs to throw that book of conventional Protoss play out the window and go back to his roots where he really shines. And I think that's exactly what he did. Like, whatever <laughs> whatever Hero did last night, he woke up today and chose violence because Buddy, <laughs> yeah. he did not stand a chance. A pro pro proper stone cold killer. It was terrifying to watch. And it, it really shows uh, Loco that a guy like Hero as well, he's able to read his opponent pretty well, right? There has to have been weaknesses that he identified before this series ever began, knowing that how he'd be able to get away with some of this stuff against Bunny, because it looked dominant. Yeah, I think he probably looked at some of his own games over the course of this tournament, and he realized, you know what, I'm playing, I'm trying to play differently than I have over the last couple of years. I. I need to just switch it up. I need to just go back to basics. And, well, Blink Stalkers and just heavy micro with the prism and eventually a little bit of Storm as well, though it almost felt like he didn't even really need that in that final game. But anyways, he just went back to what he's been doing over the last few years and, well, it worked out really well for him. Unreal. Uh, this game reminded me of, sorry to interrupt there, Clarence. Okay. Uh, this game reminded me of, like, Parting, Parting's PBT. Like, ah. Parting, obviously one of the more, uh, one of the uh, legendary purses of all time kind of thing. But he, when it came to PBT, when he had a build that worked for him in a style, especially the Stalker stuff, he just kind of went with it, right? And he could make even yeah, the, uh, yeah. the best Terrans in the world struggle. But it was really cool to see Hero just kind of say, all right, what am I good at? And he, he just really nailed it. Like, it's not even necessarily about what Bunny's bad against, it's about what Hero's good at. Yeah. And that is, that's a difficult thing to find out in times of, trouble for yourself but he just he managed to qualify man and that did not look close whatever he was a different level today <laughs> he reminds you of parting and as soon as you say parting's name all i remember is oh no gg oh, oh, <laughs> oh no <laughs> So good, so good. But that, apparently, all my concerns for protests really just didn't need to be a thing at all with Hero looking like that. That was ridiculous. Uh, and that is the series. Congratulations to Hero for qualifying for Gamers, a in record pace here at Gamers Without Borders. Next up, we've got Ragnarok versus Creator, another opportunity for another Protoss here, Loco, to be able to make it through. So, hey, maybe we go three for three in these qualification matches. Yeah, I think Creator has a very real chance. Obviously, Ragnarok is ranked, um, uh, ranked amongst the very best Zergs in the world, but yeah, yeah. Creator is he's a lot of fun to watch, right? I mean, we talked a little bit to Showtime yesterday. He was bringing up that he likes doing the same strategy over and over and over again, and maybe it's a bit stale, but he is not bored of it just yet. For sure. I think Creator is a little bit bored of playing that normal style. He likes to go for anything right he's been going dark templar into archon drops even like some some robo facility first as well with some disruptor play i think this is going to be a fun series uh, we'll get to talk about it after the break here thank you very much gentlemen and maybe creator looks at heroes road and goes hmm i want to be a killer too uh, we'll see after this break here at gamers without borders it's our final series from the career bracket here to determine which final korean goes to gamers eight